Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I'm so, so glad and excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, let's just, just call for that baby breath. Praise God. I don't know what you're expecting today, but me, I'm expecting good from God because he's a good God. And he, every day, see that now? His, his, his loving kindness is new every morning. David said he daily loads us with benefits. Hey, what about yesterday's benefit? Did you get it? Oh, yesterday is gone. Today is another day. And I'm not going to miss one benefit from him. I refuse. I will not miss. He daily loads me. He daily loads me. So, Lord, I, I'm, I'm expectant today. You see that now? So, join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread it's coming to me freely in jesus name amen praise god yeah 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 praise god now let me read a scripture to you in romans chapter 15 and verse 4 romans 15 and verse 4 it says for whatever things were written before we are written for our learning. That we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Everything you see in the Bible, it's supposed to teach you. Now that's what I've been sharing with you all week. When you read the Bible, what do you see? Don't be blinded. That's why, you know, when, when you, you hear me hit it hard when I say the Bible is not the word of God. They, I'm trying to knock off something from your mind. That's the purpose. I'm trying to knock off something from your mind. So when you, when you get angry and say, how dare you say that? Uh -huh. Start thinking. Start thinking. Start thinking. I trust the Holy Spirit is there. He's there. He would minister to you. Now, that, that's the ease by which we minister. We don't minister because we're trying to convince you of our own thoughts. No, we receive those thoughts from the Spirit of God. So when we, I'm, I'm hitting you the same way he, he does hit me. Praise God. Yeah. I remember the first day the Lord said that to me. He says, the Bible is not the Ah, you just you say, devil, get out. I know this voice. I know this voice. <laughs> Lord, are we good? <laughs> what are you trying to say? How can you say that? And then he begins to explain and explain. I say, oh, 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 God. I'm sorry. Should have known this. Should have known this. Who deceived us? No, no. <laughs> you find it. Who, who deceived us to think like this? Now, because you see, your thoughts might just be your limitation. And, and the thing with the Lord is this. Whenever he wants to take you out of your situation, the thing he does first is to hit your thinking. Because what is keeping you in that situation is your thoughts, your thinking pattern. That is your stronghold. That's why you're in that situation for that long. So, when God wants to change it, the first thing he does is to hit you in your thoughts. So, he throws a word at you that will be hard for you to chew. Now, that's what I've noticed in my life. He will throw a word and then you say, oh, how, why? Now, I'm used to it now. So, my response is, is more calm, you know. Then, he say, hey, please. But now, like, Lord, you've come again. Okay, I'm listening. Tell me. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Tell me. Don't, don't ask me questions. Just tell me. Because sometimes the Lord just say, do you know? Or sometimes I say, what if I tell you? I say, Lord, you've already started telling me. Tell me. I'm listening. <laughs> just teach me. You're my teacher now. Teach me. And, and, and guess what Jesus said? John chapter 15, verse 3. You are clean by the words that I have spoken. I love the Amplified version. The Amplified Classic, it says, 
the teachings that I discuss with you. Oh, from there I saw that I began, I realized, oh, 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 so this is how it works. Now I see. Lord, come on now, teach me. Come discuss with me. Praise God. Why? Because I want to be clean all the time. I want to be clean. See that now? I want to be clean. So if you don't receive teachings from the Lord, sorry for you. You may be reading your Bible morning and night. If you don't receive teachings from the Lord, you end up being like a Pharisee. The anger of the Pharisees is that they read this thing, but they don't see the result in their lives. That is their anger. So when they see someone else leaving this thing out, they antagonize the person. You know why? We've been in this thing for many years. You, you, where did you come from? And you're just leaving it with ease. Now nah, you must be using something else. See that? But they don't know exactly what Jesus said to them. You will not come to me. You will not come to me. That's the problem with a lot of people in church today. They don't come to Jesus. They don't go. They don't, they don't go to him. They, they just think, Oh, my pastor have declared this week is a blessed week. Amen, amen. So because my pastor have said this week is a blessed week and it will be a blessed week. You don't know. See, everything that is not directly from the Lord has its own limitations. Yeah. Because you see, you, you remember the seven sons of Sceva. Now, they had people casting out devils. They had Paul casting out devils and the devils were responding. And, and, and no, I mean, that time, there was just demon casting everywhere. Praise God. So, so they, they, they went, the Bible said they were exorcists. So they took it upon themselves. And they, so they used to cast out devils in their own way by um, exorcism. So they now found a new way I mean, you can just say, in the name of Jesus, come out. And the devil will go out. And before they will use days and months and weeks to, to drive out one demon. But someone just comes and says, out. And then the devil goes out. <laughs> okay, we've learned a new thing to add to our trade. That, that was their reason. So they began using it. In the name of Jesus, they, Paul, you know, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, come out. I, I believe they must have gotten one or two results. Oh yeah, just like when some, you know, some people say, you know, I, I was in trouble and I say, the God of, you know, they call their pastor's name, save me. And a miracle happens. And then they come share the testimony and say, oh, the God of our pastor is very powerful. Yes, but I'll tell you this truth, don't let anybody deceive you. It will not work all the time. A day comes when that demon will act like the seven sons of Sceva. Jesus, we know. Your pastor, we know. Brother, sister, who are you? A day will come when they will ask you those questions. You see, because that's how it works. It cannot be a permanent way. See that now? It cannot be a permanent way. Because it's, no, it's normal with everything. Once you start at something, after a while, that thing begins to form a resistance towards you. So if you don't learn to step up, it's same thing, same thing with your life. I mean, something as little as mosquitoes in your house. You're using a particular kind of insecticide. And if you use that particular kind of insecticide for so long, somehow the mosquitoes in your house will form a resistance to it. And you now notice that, ah, this thing doesn't work. Maybe I need to apply more. And then you'll be endangering your health. But sometimes all you just need to do is to change. Use something, use another product. So they don't get adapted to that particular type. You see that? Now that's how demons operate. That's how life challenges uh, operate. They, after a while, they form a resistance. So if you think every time, the God of my pastor, the God of my pastor, a day will come, life situations will form a resistance towards that. And then like demons, they will ask you, your pastor we know, the God of your pastor we know, who are you? So that's why I admonish you, know this God for yourself. Why will your pastor call it and he will respond? 
What about me? And that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I, when you ask my, in my name, I will not say that I will pray the Father for, because the Father himself loves you. See that now? So you've got to know Jesus for yourself. That's why I told you, come to him. If he's not real to you, you will not come to him. Many people are in church, but Jesus is not real to them. They haven't considered him real in their lives. You even find people who say, for example, you know, you know, I've seen, I've seen people. Because, well, for example, you know, last week I talked about tithing. So I've seen, I've met several people who you tell, them, hey, the tithe belongs to God, right? I said, yeah. Have you ever taken the tithe to him before? Um, yeah, I do. How? I take it to church and I get call out for titles and I go out. Hey, have you ever asked the Lord, since it is his money, Lord, what would you have me do with it? And then let him tell you what to do with it. And then you obey. Um, will he speak to me? See, that becomes your problem. Will he speak to you? Why would you think he will not speak to you? Now, that's to tell you how much people don't believe in Jesus. No, I believe in Jesus, but you know, ah, hey, I, I, I was talking to someone one time, <laughs> and, and I said, yeah, he will speak to you. And I said, ah, if he speak to me, I'll just run. Hey, have you been born again? Of course I'm born again. I'm a Christian. Uh, so, uh, uh, look at what you're saying. That if God speaks to you, you run. But you are supposed to be living with his word coming to you every day. And when I mean every day, I don't mean once a day. Jesus, Jesus said it, you know, quoting from the eternal. He says, a man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He didn't say proceeded. He said proceeds, present, continuous. Meaning you are meant to live by the word that is coming out from the mouth of God today, right now. The next situation coming into your life, what's going to help you overcome it is the word of God that will come from his mouth to you. So if your mind is in that place where you say, if God speaks to me, I will run, then you are not serious. You don't believe him. Praise God. That's your problem. You don't believe in God. You don't. You No, no, I've, I've, no, you don't believe in God. That's the truth. Take it and start believing. <laughs> Tell yourself the truth. You don't believe him. How, so what do you think about God? How are you different from the native doctor in your village? Maybe the native doctor even believes more in his God than you. Because he, he may just believe that his God knows how to communicate to him clearly. But you, if God speaks to me, I will run. Come on now. He's supposed to be speaking to you every day. Now, this, this is how this thing works. What we read in the Bible is God speaking to them. Oh, you read about Abraham. The word of the Lord came to Abraham and said, you read about Jeremiah and the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. You read about Isaiah, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Or oh, Isaiah right there and the word of the Lord came to me. Oh, you know, when you read that, what do you think? Has that word stopped coming? The same way it came to Elisha, the same way it came to Elijah, it's the same way it should be coming to you today. And, and, and hear me, some of us just think God will only speak when it's a earth shaking, you know, some people, you know, like the person who told me, he said, if God speaks, I will run. You know, you know, what's on her mind is this, oh Lord, speak to me, my daughter, ah, okay, that, you see, that, that, I, I don't know where those thoughts came from, but it's wrong. God speaks to your heart. He speaks to your spirit. Oh, what about people that say, I heard an audible voice? They did not hear an audible voice. 
they heard the voice in their spirit but it came with such urgency and loudness that they thought they heard it from outside see that now because the truth is no other person heard it god spoke to me with an audible voice no it's just a way of speaking <laughs> i heard the lord like an audible voice that's the right way to say it Spoken with an odd somebody standing there with you. Say, the Lord just spoke to me with an audible voice. And the person looking at you, bro, why are you like audible voice and I didn't hear anything? No, he spoke to your spirit. You see, God is a spirit. So when he speaks, our spirits receive his words and our spirit translate those words into our mind. It's with the way it is communicated to your mind that now you now describe it the way you want to describe it. So now sometimes because of lack of knowledge, we might use the wrong term or use the wrong words in describing the experience we just had. Forgive people for that. See that now? So the same way he comes audibly to you is the same way he comes with all calmness to you. Now, many times when you hear it audibly, you must know that it's either urgent or you have to make a decision now, now, now. Or he's re-emphasizing something he's been saying to you many times. My time is up. <laughs> hey, God can speak to you. We're going to talk about this tomorrow. God bless you.